tonight on Super Size vs Super Skinny. Two worlds collide as the feeding clinic gets two more extreme eaters. Junk food addict Andy. I think if they made a salad that tasted as good as, as fish and chips, I, I would be slim. And too busy to eat, Hannah. Food is just something that takes up more time. It doesn't really play a role in my life. They're damaging their bodies with their destructive diets, so it's time for a week of shock therapy. Also, our four anorexics bravely confront their issues with food head on. I found it exceedingly difficult mm -hmm. watching all that oil go on. And Anna's arms get a gruelling circus workout. I'm the only one that can't spin properly. For the next five days, Andy and Hannah will be taking part in our diet swap experiment, where they will exchange a typical week's intake, meal for meal. The swap will be overseen by Dr Christian Jessen, who's giving both Super Size and Super Skinny a wake-up call before it's too late. Super Skinny Hannah runs her own bookkeeping business, leaving her no time to eat. Running my own business means that I'm very, very busy, very focused on my work. Um, I tend to get very involved in what I'm doing and forget about eating. Despite being 28, Hannah exists on a diet of sugary snacks and kids cereal. If I'm in the office and I want something quick that I can eat while I'm working, a bowl of cereal is the easiest thing and I don't really like any other cereals other than chocolate. <laughs> For Hannah, food is just something else on her list of things to do. There are lots of things which I don't like or I won't eat. I don't cook, I don't get involved with food, so for me it's just another thing that has to be done. The only decent meal she gets is dinner, which her partner insists she eats. I just worry that she's not getting, you know, that which she needs during the day. But it's the arrival of her son Charlie that's finally prompted her to change. <sighs> Having Charlie's made me realise um, that I need to adjust the way that I deal with food. I don't want to project onto him um, my eating habits. Hi there, Hannah. Yes. I'm Christian. Nice to meet you. Hannah's been put through a detailed medical to make sure she's up to the task ahead. So that makes you 95 pounds. At six stone 10 and at five foot seven, Hannah should be around nine stone. Her low weight has some serious health implications. For the same reasons that overweight people have health risks, underweight people do too. And with someone with a diet as bad as yours, where you're lacking all sorts of important things that you need, you're going to run into problems with musculature, breakdown, weakness, tiredness, lethargy, anemia. They might not necessarily be happening now, but leave things as they are, and that will be a reality in the future. Good boy. Not only is her quick-fix diet having an impact on her body, her erratic eating is causing problems at home. It's Charlie! When I've come home from work, he'll say, oh, what have you eaten today? And I generally don't answer him. Um, and it's kind of got to the point where he doesn't bring up food because he knows it will cause an argument. If she had a bit more energy, we could do more things, rather than just sitting in front of the TV, which tends to, to be what happens. And I just, you know, I, I, I fear you know, that if we just did this for the rest of our lives, that, you know, that, that maybe our relationship wouldn't last forever. My partner does everything, cooking, cleaning, he looks after our son, um, and I'd like to be able to participate in that. So does your partner mainly do the sort of the hard work, the housework and the looking after your, yeah, your baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you getting upset? Because it's not fair on them. If you realise that it's such a problem and you can see that and it's upsetting you now, why do you think you haven't been able to change it so far? I don't know, because I don't know how to get out of the cycle. I don't know... I don't know how to change the way that I view food. I don't know how to change my lifestyle. And I'm not going to listen to anyone that's close to me because I like them to think that I can do it all by myself. But Hannah doesn't have to go it alone. Coming to the rescue is Super Size Andy, who's hoping to pass on his passion for food. Step on, let's see how much you weigh. 
So that makes you £347. At nearly 25 stone, junk food addict Dandy is morbidly obese. Just like Hannah, this 32-year-old from Walsall is devoted to his family, but his diet could destroy his life. I'm only 32, but I don't think I'll be here much longer if I keep going the way I'm going. Andy's binging is based on fast food. My favourite food is, is possibly chips. And, and any meal you can think of, even, even a Sunday roast, I might scoop some chips on there. I love kebab meat, and nearly every time I go to the chip shop, if I don't have the kebab meat with the chips, I have a kebab burger to take with me as well. I need, I need re-educating. I'm, I'm stuck in my own little bubble. Tell me about your, your weight history. I've always been uh, bigger than everybody else. Uh, I've always roughly been the same weight in stones as my age up until the age of about 26, 27. What's causing your weight gain? I know it's common sense to eat less, exercise more, uh, to lose weight, but I really don't know the right way to go about these things. With a second child on the way, he's desperate to get his life on track. How lucky can one guy be? Recently made redundant, Andy sings for charity at his local bingo club. Like Ain't that a kick in the head? If I go for job interviews, I think when I walk into the room and the interviewer's sitting there, I think they've made their mind up before I've sat down because of my size. He can't do this job. He's lazy. He's not going to be reliable. So I feel it affects my work options as well. But I feel like I'm letting it beat me as well. And I, and I can't let that happen. But as well as his weight affecting his career options, it's also having a serious effect on his young son. Yeah, tell me a little bit about it. It's Jake, isn't it? Jake, yes. Son. Tell me what's happening with him. Um, he's, a, he's a little mini-me, and that's very scary to think that I'm his role model. Eating a takeaway and chips every night is going to be telling him this is an acceptable way to behave and to eat. And it's not, is that? No. I need to, to change my entire outlook now and do something that I can realistically keep on doing forever. With a 20 stone difference, Andy and Hannah are complete opposites. Before they begin the swap, it's time for them to meet. It's really nice to meet you. It's, uh, this is in the most nerve-wracking uh, part yeah, of this. <laughs> Andy and Hannah have provided details of a typical week's food intake, which they'll be swapping when the experiment begins. We're going to start with your breakfast. Here we go. Whoa! Sweets for breakfast. Breakfast, yeah, is that about right? Some sort of revolting looking cereal. Let's go on to lunches. Let's see how much you tend to get through for lunch. That looks like more cereal. It's something I can eat while I'm still working. Now, dinners, I think your partner makes. He does. So I'm yes. hoping these are about. <laughs> Let's have a look. What's um, this? Chicken, potatoes, salad. Again, that looks like, what, a bit of pork or a bit of chicken, yes. something like that? Yeah. And that's it. Hannah consumes just over 1,000 calories a day. An average woman should consume double that. Not only is she under-eating, she's also missing out on most of the vitamins and minerals her body requires. Right, Andy, we're going to start with your breakfast. OK. Whoa! Believe it or not. <laughs> I thought I was skipping breakfast. Let's go on and have a look at your lunches. Wow, OK. Kebab, chips, saveloy. Let's see what you eat for dinner. Masses more chips, saveloy, burger. There's a theme running through this tube. Do you see what it is? I seem to have, as you can see, chips with everything. This has always been the way I've eaten. OK. You also snack in between meals. Thanks to his junk food diet, Andy is clocking up over 5,000 calories a day. He consumes three times his recommended daily salt intake and a whopping 250 grams of fat. The, the sheer quantities, it, it's upset me. I, I didn't expect that at all. 
truth be told, we've all got our own hang-ups when it comes to our bodies. I'm no exception. I've lost two stone in two years, and am I happy? Am I hell? All I see in front of the mirror are imperfections. That's where it all goes so horribly wrong. I've become totally obsessed with getting the body beautiful. You name it, I'll do it, and I'm not averse to trying the odd quick fix. This year, I've decided to dedicate myself to achieving the body I've always wanted, and I'm willing to try anything to tackle those problem areas. Oh. And speaking of problem areas, my arms. I have got proper dinner lady arms. Look at that. Big wobbly bingo wings. Everything I own has a sleeve. Even my pyjamas. I'm desperate to get some A-list appendages and it seems like I'm not the only one who's obsessed. Michelle Obama's Amazonian arms almost got as many column inches as her hubby's inauguration and magazines seem awash with talk of celebrity biceps and triceps. I've been working down the gym with Matt, my personal trainer, to get the arms I want, but that's been like joining the SAS. I don't think I can look a kettlebell in the eye ever again. I'm knackered. I'm not convinced it's working. Am I ever going to be able to go sleeveless like a true red carpet celebrity? It's time to get the inside track. TV presenter Amanda Byram knows firsthand about the pressures of looking good in Hollywood, and she's got the arms to prove it. Check you out with your Hollywood arms. Well, I mean, thank you very much. Oh. Now, why do you call them Hollywood arms? Because they are proper celebrity arms. Do you think so? And I want a pair. So, will you show me how well, I, can well, I? Well, I'll tell you what I do. Amanda's letting me in on her secret weapon. It may look like a giant catapult, but this girl swears by it. Biceps. One. Really slow, isolating your muscles. Oh, oh that this. kills! You can get your hands on a resistance band like this for around a tenner. And you can bundle it into your luggage when you go away. So it's like having your very own mobile gym. Sexy arms, here I come. But you know, it's funny because you kind of think, Quick fix, for your arms, do a quick workout, no problem. It's hard work. So resistance is certainly not futile, and these giant bands have left Amanda with arms to die for. But typical me, I want results now. I can't help it. As far as I'm concerned, patience is not a virtue. If I could just find the arms I wanted in a box. Ah. Uh -huh. Now, this claims to use electronic muscle stimulation toning technology to create deep muscle contractions to tone your body. If, when I plug this in, I get blown to kingdom come, will somebody please just tell my mum I was merely trying to tone my bingo wings that I inherited from her? That's a very strange sensation. I may not be paying in sweat, but I'm definitely paying. This system will set you back a wallet slimming £95.99p. Oh, going up to 20 <gasps> But they say you'll see results after four weeks if you use it five times a week. If it helps me beat a bummer in the arms race, it's worth it. Whoa! I can't control my arm. Look, look at what it does. It feels like I'm having an electric shock every six sec every five seconds. Look at that. This is properly really weird. I think one of the weirdest things I've ever tried. I'll try and give it my best shot and I'll come back to you. This week's feeding clinic residents are quick fix eater Hannah and junk food addict Andy. With their bags unpacked, it's time for the first meal of the diet swap. Fish and chips, yeah. I'm not complaining. Both got fish I, and I, chips. I might pinch some chips off you, though, if that's OK. <laughs> it might be the same meal, but Andy's is child-sized and oven-cooked, while Hannah gets the full-on fish and chip shop experience, plus a side order of Andy's favourite, kebab meat. I'm a bit intimidated. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite scary. <laughs> I think just looking at the plate in, in the first place just made me feel quite ill, to be honest, just from the quantity. Andy's gobbling his oven fish dish at breakneck speed. I'm quite scared now because I'm getting down to the end of this. <laughs> and I'm just looking at yours. <laughs> I will dream tonight about that kebab. And even though Hannah's hardly made a nod to the cod, it's already proving too much. There's probably about three or four meals here. 
I can't eat past a certain point. If I start to feel sort of slightly full or, you know, I, I feel a bit like well, I've eaten quite a lot, I have to stop. And I can't understand how somebody can obviously build it up to eat that amount of food without feeling physically sick. It's the second day of the swap and food is at the forefront of Andy's mind. For my breakfast this morning, I'd love a bacon, egg, sausage, tomato and mushroom sandwich but I really don't think I'm going to get that. Judging from the food tube yesterday, I'm hoping it's not four or five fruit pastels or something on a plate. And Andy's worst fears have come true. I'm just having some sweets. I, I was feeling guilty and they're giving breakfast. me two, two coffees for breakfast, but <laughs> now I'm quite... I'm so I think tired. you're getting what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Like many supersizers, Andy saves his solids for later on. I didn't expect to be eating sweets. You would expect like all bran or like muesli of mm -hmm. some sort or yeah. like rabbit food. <laughs> I, just, I need sugar, I need sugar. <laughs> I need caffeine. Yeah. Although I knew my diet was pretty rubbish, I think it's made me realise even more. And I think there are certain habits which I've got into, which if I change something slightly in the way that you know, I prepare my food or where I put it in front of me, may encourage me to eat more. Mmm. Stuffed. Couldn't, couldn't eat another bite. After two days in the house, it's time for Andy and Hannah to start thinking about the emotional aspects of their eating by looking back at the past. I think I'm about six, seven on this photograph. I've been told by family I've always been big. Mm. But look at that, and I'm, I'm, I'm not. No, not at all. At that age, my dad had, had recently oh. left. Um, my mum's always been a good mum. I'm, I'm not going to say anything, anything bad about her. But I think she took my dad leaving pretty bad as well. And my mum used to perhaps say to me, "Is a pound go out to the cheap shop with your friends and get some something easy." Uh, and I remember, I remember eating the comfort there. This one, I'm possibly about 21. And then this one, I, I absolutely hate and detest this photograph. I love the fact that I've got my son on my lap. Yeah. But from there, everything else across, I think it's disgusting. With Andy now understanding his connection with food, Hannah looks back to her childhood for answers. I went to boarding school between the ages of seven and 11. You know, I was young, away from home. I didn't like the food. And I think because I didn't like it, I didn't eat it. So by the time I left boarding school, I think I'd kind of got used to feeling free and wasn't really interested. My parents both worked and didn't really, you know, weren't really around to, to see what I ate. Um, so I would never have breakfast. You know, I might take lunch to school, but I might not. I might just buy sweets on the way and eat those through the day. Hannah has always controlled what she eats and now resents any interference. I don't want to be seen as a child. So why do I need somebody to cook my meals and put them in front of me and say, there you go, eat that? Or, you know, come home from, from work, it's, what have you eaten today? It feels like the sort of thing that you would ask a child. Anna knows her diet needs to change, but accepting help is hard. I want to be treated like an adult who can look after themselves, which I obviously can't. <laughs> and I think that's something that I need to learn and I need to accept, that nobody can do everything by themselves. It's, you need... Sorry. Okay. Okay. It's just, it's really hard for me to admit that I can't cope. I need to kind of forget all my old habits. So the easiest way to do that is go home with a, a clean slate with regards to food and eating habits and say, OK, where do I go from here? Let's start again from scratch. To cheer Hannah up, Andy's decided to treat her to his favourite lunch, a doner kebab and chips. Uh, usually, while I'm waiting for my, uh, my meal, I order something else as well. It's a lovely savoy. It looks very manufactured and kind of uh, and possibly not is. real proper food. It wouldn't be unusual for me to have two um, and, and maybe uh, a pickled egg or something. But inhaling the aromas of kebab truly tests Andy's willpower. Do you like an extra fork? Uh, no, I better not. <laughs> <laughs> an extra fork gives me the, 
the feeling that I'm allowed to eat it. After a sugary breakfast, there's another letdown in store for Andy. His lunch is a bowl of chocolate cereal. There we go. Um, yeah, that's right. lunch. <sighs> Enjoy. Actually, sitting and watching somebody eat a bowl of cereal for lunch like looks completely ridiculous to me. It's like, you know, how could that possibly constitute a meal? But I don't think twice about it when I'm doing it myself. But Andy's not having any breakthroughs about his diet. He's still yearning for his favourite meal. To watch Anna have what I normally eat, it was, it was disturbing to think that's what I normally eat. But I also feel I'm a little bit envious because I wanted that food. Back at the house, Andy's still fighting the kebab cravings. Dr Christian wants to wake him up to the impact junk food could have on his future. You're still slightly lusting after some of your old yeah. food, aren't you? I am, yes. You're missing it. I am. It's, it's the only thing that I know. We're definitely going to tell you all the alternatives, the healthier options, mm. but I want really now to just have another go at you about why you need to change the type of food you're eating as well as the quantity of the food. I think it's perfectly realistic to say this is you in 15, 20 years' time. OK. Absolutely you, unless you change things after this week. OK. OK? Mm -hmm. Watch this. Hello, my name is Ruth Van Denderen, and I'm 51 years old, and I weigh 31 stones. Being one of seven kids, food was very scarce. Food back then was survival. If you didn't have food, you were going to go hungry. And I think as a kid, that's the way I thought of food. If I didn't have it, I was going to die. When I was 14, I was 16 stones. In my 20s, I was about 20 stones. In the 30s, about 28. And it progressively has gone up to where I am now, which is 31 stones. Over the past three years, I've been in the hospital three times. Two years ago, I had a heart attack. I, I felt like my body was shutting down. I was having a hard time breathing. And that was, that was scary, being in the hospital and not sure if you're gonna live. I haven't seen my grandkids since 2005. And I used to spend every single day with my grandkids. Where I'm at right now, there's no way I could get on a plane to see them. I mean, that's gut-wrenching. But that's my reality. I think the most important thing to remember is that life's a journey. And you definitely do not want to take the journey that I've taken. What do you think of that? Oh, I can see it already. Some of the things that you say. You have to now stop lusting after your kebab meat and your chips. You have to let go to that. It's OK, it's OK, it's OK. It's not so much about me. Obviously, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to get like that. I just want to be there for my kids. <laughs> Andy's reality check has made him determined to fight for the future. And it's starting with his next meal. I'm giving you omelette. And I'm really sorry, but there's some of the green stuff. Oh, no. I've got some lettuce. Now ready to take on his toughest challenge yet, and he's facing up to his lifelong fear of salad. I don't ever recall having any, ever eating this, ever. Never had salad at all? No. 
I promise you, the green stuff is not as bad as it this is. This is the bit that's scaring me. Is it? It, it, it? It's just something I don't do, ever. If you don't like it, try like... and have a bit of the omelette with a bit of the side salad, Would rather you? than just eating the bit of leaf on its own. I'm going to have to put this with something. Very, very nice. Yeah. Really nice. I would have detested that at one time, mm. but I can see where you're coming from. It's, it's quite nice. I really think my partner's going to kill me. Because the amount of time she says, would you like a salad for tea? And I said, no, yeah. I can't stand salad. And here I am eating. Quick Fix Skinny Hannah and junk food addict Andy are taking part in our week-long diet swap experiment. So far, Hannah's learned that it's the end of the road for her food on the go. It's actually sitting and watching somebody eat a bowl of cereal for lunch, like, looks completely ridiculous to me. And Andy swapped grease for greens. It's very, very nice. Okay. Really nice. After four days, both are ready to change lifelong eating habits. But before they can, there's one more crucial lesson to learn. This childish eater and convenience king have one major stumbling block. Neither can cook. These kitchen dodgers are heading to a local restaurant. They'll have the task of cooking for each other under the guidance of Jan, the chef. Hi. Hello. So, have you ever chopped an onion? No. Oh, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Hannah's culinary talents rarely stretch beyond an omelette. Cooking a chicken breast is a challenge. So you can feel it's... Um, it's quite bouncy. It's bouncy, yeah, exactly. Mm. And uh, when the chicken is cooked, it should be firm. It smells really good. So I'm actually quite looking forward to dinner now. As soon as I started preparing the food, I seemed to, to take a bit of pride in what was going into the ingredients a bit more. But you don't get that from a takeaway. You just order something and you get it in the bag. But before they collect their Michelin stars, it's time to sit down to their last supper. I actually, I don't feel bad about giving you that because that looks really delicious. And I don't feel bad at all <laughs> about giving you that. It smells delicious lovely, too. yeah. I'm actually going to attempt the one thing that I don't want to eat. How's the sweet corn? It really is nice. I yeah. want some more. There's a chilli. So I'm sitting here, I'm halfway through it and I'm thinking, I could probably eat more than what's here. Two empty plates. Yeah, I'll go so far as to say it's the best meal I've ever had. Really nice. There's something about knowing that, you know, we've, we've helped cook them as well. I think it makes it special, doesn't it, for mm. both of us. It's, it's good. Five weeks ago, Ashley, Morag, Roz and Fiona embarked on a course of therapy to tackle their eating disorder, anorexia nervosa. Overseeing the group's progress, a consultant psychiatrist, Dr Peter Rowan, and eating disorder dietitian, Ursula Philpott. Over the last week, they've been reflecting on their progress. I'm just scared of getting back into this vicious cycle, and I kind of felt like I kicked it in the arse, but it's coming back. Onwards and upwards, I'm not going to let it get, get me down too much. Things that I would ne probably just kind of duck out of um, in the past, I'm actually doing and carrying forward, and that just makes me feel more positive about myself and, you know, the fact that I can change things. This week, the group's challenge is to eat out in a restaurant. For most of us, eating out is a sociable and pleasurable occasion. For somebody with an eating disorder, it can be a stressful experience that's often avoided. Not being able to eat out can lead to social isolation. And it's absolutely crucial for the group's recovery that they get over this. For the group, anxieties of eating in front of others often start at home. 25-year-old Fiona lives with her parents, and mealtimes are a solitary experience. I prefer to cook something and take it upstairs. I try to be very careful about choosing where I eat so that I'll feel safe and feel okay with eating that meal. 
Ashley's three-year battle with anorexia has distanced him from family life. Meal times are very isolated for me. Even if I'm sitting down with the family, I always feel like there's a grey cloud hanging over us and everyone's watching me. It's nice. Mum Morag's restrictive eating habits have ruined her social life. Lost the opportunity to see my friends because it often revolves around food. It's just easy not to do it, really. Roz's life has become dominated by her obsession with food. It excludes you from your family, from Adam and William. They're, they're, they're eating their cheese butties and their packets of crisps and they've got some chips and, and I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm not. Eating together in a restaurant is designed to help the group break their solitary eating habits and start socialising again around food. Today, the group will need to relinquish their usual tight control over the way the food is cooked and the ingredients used. Guys, regarding the ingredients what you're using here, we have the plain butter, the soya sauce, the oil and the brandy for the steak, the, the meat. It's quite difficult to try and get across to people what the real terror and fear of an anorexic is with respect to food. It's the absolute terror that their total self and the way that they are and their very being is threatened. They've already got oil on it. Very it's nice. fine. It makes it's it taste flavor. Not fine. It is. The most difficult thing today was watching Charlie put lots of oil on that griddle. He kept putting it on and I thought, when does it end? And I think this is my fear of going out to eat. Watching their meal being prepared has been tough for the group. Slowly but surely, they managed to take a few tentative mouthfuls. I'm absolutely terrified of oil, but I think it's just important to remember that it adds to the taste, and that's why people use it, not because it's a bad thing, that's and right. that they're trying to, you know, no. make you fat or whatever. I've got the scallops here. I've had some veggies, but I must admit I found it exceedingly difficult mm -hmm. watching all that oil go mm. on there. The group have been able to embrace today's challenge, so the next step is to start rebuilding their relationships by eating out with their friends and family. For Morag, tonight's meal with her husband is giving them some much needed time alone. I can't remember the last time I got dressed up to go out to dinner with Richard. I'm going to have the spaghetti with prawns and spinach and red onion and chilli. Yum. <laughs> And I had what I actually wanted to have, which I've wanted to have for years, probably, um, and it was absolutely delicious. Big on forms. Mm -mm. I feel like I've moved on massively, even from a few weeks ago. I think Morag has been very relaxed this evening, much more so than, than I think she used to be. I've really enjoyed it, so it's just proved to me that I can, and there's nothing to worry about, and it's actually quite nice. Nice to be out with everyone else enjoying myself. Roz, on the other hand, struggled the most with the restaurant task and faces an enormous challenge as she prepares for a meal out with her husband. I'm not going to order a lasagna or anything like that and push, really push the boat out, but I'm going to order what I want um, and just be mindful that, you know, I, it, first and foremost in my mind must be that I need to put on weight. And I just keep trying to remember that. Whilst it's tough for Roz, tonight she's trying hard to put her anxieties to one side. Fiona's avoided even eating in the same room as her parents, so tonight's meal out is an important step towards reuniting the family. It's nice going out with my parents because it's just time spent together, which I can really look forward to. Uh, can I have the uh, monkfish problem solved, please? We enjoy eating out together. There have been times when it's not been good because Fiona was backing off from food. But recently, she's uh, been very positive. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Oh, lovely. We don't spend enough time together, so now it feels like we're making up for lost time, really. For three years, Ashley's social life was put on hold. So tonight's meal with an old friend is a reminder of the fun he's missing out on. 
Tonight's definitely not about anorexia for me. It's just about socialising and putting myself back out there again. I really want to prove to myself that I can make the most of good company and not let food dominate. What drink you having? Have a pint of the hard stuff. <laughs> I'll probably just have Coke. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ashley hasn't eaten pasta in four years, so despite not finishing his portion, tonight's meal has been a huge achievement for him. I haven't finished my meal, but it's because I'm genuinely full up. Like, I had, I had pasta, for Christ's sake. Like, I said I'd never eat pasta again at one point, and just so, so pleased with all that's gone. If you've been affected by any of the issues raised in this programme, go to our website at channel4.com forward slash health. It's Andy and Hannah's final breakfast, and after just five days, both are starting to appreciate the error of their ways. It's not really a proper breakfast, though. <laughs> Three biscuits. There's too much there for, for one person. I'm really hoping, and I've got the willpower and determination when I get home to, to keep on eating sensibly and, and, and questioning whether I'm hungry and full. And yourself? It has, it has made a real difference to how I feel within myself, so... And I think not telling James that he has to control what I eat, but asking him to kind of step in so that he can be a constant reminder to me of why I'm doing it. It's three months since Hannah and Andy checked out of the feeding clinic. And now they're back. But how much of an impact has their 12-month eating plan really had? Right, it is your last day here. Let's give you your diet plans. So... Andy, that one's yours, and Hannah, that one's yours. This is going to be tough, because you're essentially leaving here now, and it's up to you to make these changes. And I'll see you in 12 weeks' time, see how you're getting on. All right, Andy, thank you very much. Thank you. Hannah, best of luck. I feel really positive about the future and moving forward. Once I've put into place the changes with the healthy, balanced diet, if that can be like a long-term thing, it's going to make such a difference to me and my family, so... Thank you ever so much for this have, week. Have a really safe journey. You've been a great help, thank you. Yeah. And give your son a big hug for me. Same here, thank you very Take much. Care. Take care, Anna. Bye. Bye. I feel like I'm leaving and, I, and have the determination and the willpower to overcome any obstacles that, I'm, that I know I'm going to face at all. I realise that I might never be skinny, but I can be much healthier and be happy with what I see in the mirror. After weeks of singling out my lumps and bumps in a quest for the perfect bod, I've turned my attention to my arms. So far, I've hit the weights, banded about with Amanda Byram, and even tried a bit of shock treatment to blitz my bingo wings. I've only got one thing to say about this electronic muscle stimulation device and that is ow ow i know people say you've got to feel the burn i didn't think they meant literally quite honestly i would rather go to the gym i'm not too keen on using a battery operated machine to reach arm nirvana and to be honest everything else i've tried just hasn't captured my imagination so after a little research i found the new kid on the celebrity block when it comes to toning up your wings jakari Sorry, I'm late. Don't worry, don't worry. Hello, Come join hi. Us. Hi. So this is your fly set that we're going to be using today. So this is your space around here. So the ropes in, are inside this. You'll notice that they're really, really sturdy. Mm -hmm. It'll take ten times your body weight. So anything you, you put onto this bar, you'll be safe. Jakari was created by a leading trainer manufacturer who teamed up with one of the world's biggest circuses. They mixed up cardiovascular exercise with trapeze-style moves that target your upper body. Because the workout is actually based on real circus moves, it feels more like clowning around, even though it's really tough, and it's already proved a hit with celebrities Misha Barton and Kim Kardashian. I'm the only one that can't spin properly. Stop! Stop! Do you know what? That might look really easy, but it was incredibly difficult. And I reckon that if you kept that up for a few weeks, you would definitely have rock-hard arms. <laughs> it's
It's three months since Hannah and Andy checked out of the feeding clinic. And now they're back. But how much of an impact has their eating plan really had? I'd be surprised if I haven't lost a stone. Maybe pushing two. I don't want to stand on the scales and for it to say less or the same as I was before. How have the last 12 weeks been? They've been surprisingly well. I see food in a completely different light. So what, how have the food that you're eating now changed? How's it changed from before? There's a lot more greens in my food. Um, I'm eating more salad. I'm eating more vegetables. Um, I avoid any kind of sweets, crisps, chocolates. I don't touch those at all. Your big worry was your son Jake mm -hmm. seemed to be getting bigger and putting on weight and copying all of his father's bad habits. Has that started to change? It really has. He doesn't ever ask for chips which is something that was a daily routine for both of us. So you'd say that these last two, 12 weeks for you have been a success? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The way I perceive myself's improved. And, and I've always been told, if you can't love yourself, who else is going to love you? And I've started to not love myself, but I like me much more than I used to. Hannah, welcome back. How have you found the last 12 weeks? Um, I found it really hard to start with. Um, just the quantity of food that that I was sort of advised I should be eating. When I sort of looked at it on paper, it didn't look like very much. Um, but when I was actually trying to introduce it into my daily routine, it, it was very, very hard. Do you think you've succeeded in making changes? Um, the main changes, I do have breakfast now. Good. Um, and, I, and I don't have chocolate cereal <laughs> for breakfast. I have, you know, sort of a muesli or, or something like that. I mean, physically, you're, you're looking better. You're looking brighter, more awake for a start. And how, how about energy levels? Have things improved there? Yeah, definitely. Um, I notice it more in the evenings when I get home from work. Instead of just sort of vegging on the couch like I used to, um, I'm able to help James a lot more around the house. I'm with Charlie, so that's been really positive. Just before they get their weigh-in results, the pair are reunited. How are you? I'm well. How are it's you? Good to see you yeah, you too. You look fantastic. Your face looks so <laughs> different. You've lost so much around here. I don't mean to insult you, but you looked quite tired last time I saw you. Yeah, yeah. You don't. You look no, really I, really... I feel like I've got more energy. All right, chaps, it's time to um, put you out of your miseries, really, isn't it? But first, what a transformation, don't yes, you think? It's fantastic, yeah, it looks really well. Such a dramatic change in you. Are you impressed? I am, actually. I mean, I thought Andy would do really well. And what about this young lady? Amazing. So you're clearly buzzing with a little bit more energy. Mm. And Andy, you. I mean, your face has changed completely. So, have the last three months made a difference in the weight department? But weight-wise, do you think you've gained, lost, stayed the same? I'll be happy if I've stayed the same, I think. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if I've lost a bit of weight. Well, actually, you have stayed pretty much exactly as you always have been. No great changes at all. But I do know, to be fair to you, you have been ill, haven't you? I had a sickness bug, and then shortly after I had flu. I suspect, looking at you, you did actually manage to put on some weight, but unfortunately, with the illness, you then lost it again, so you are sort of the same as you were. So, Andy, what about you? Your turn. How do you think? What's your guess? If I've lost two stone, I'll be You're very happy. happy. Man. But if I've lost a stone, I'll still be happy, because I'm going in the right direction. Well, you've done quite a bit better than two. You've lost three stone, four pounds, which I have to say is... Phenomenal. Not only that, you've lost eight inches around your tummy. You've lost six inches around your thighs. It's dropping off you, and you just look so much better for it. I feel much better too. I really do. So, guys, I think, you know, you've both absolutely cracked it. You know you can do it. You know it works. And you know that it's not absolutely impossible, don't you? These little tiny changes that you make in your lives make such a huge difference. So keep up the good work, both of you. And I only recovered from my illness about a week ago. So I'm, I'm really pleased that I've managed to get back to where I was. Um, it's a step in the right direction. And I know that if I go home and carry on, then I will gain some weight from sort of moving forward. It's a long journey. It's, it's going to take me a long time to, to perhaps be the size that I want to be and, and to get all the weight off. But I know that I can do it.